Um, I'd like to ask, I mean, obviously location is most important for a lot of these places. And um, why do you think, or, or rather let's start again, I, I wanted to find out the market share. You said on chart six, the market share increased 9.1% to 11.3% for the overall industry, for supermarkets, right? Am I right? Is that supermarkets and hypermarkets? Uh, just to clarify, the entire industry represents um, the grocery retail industry. So not only do we have supermarkets, hypermarkets, also convenience stores. Okay, anything that's ex-wet wet markets, basically. Anything that's ex-wet markets. But if you were to look at Xinxiong and its actually direct competitors, what would be their market share? And that growth in market share might not be really attributable to Xinxiong itself. For example, it could be NTUC, which is, I think, their major competitor. How would that share break up? That's one. And secondly, um, you said that they will have a store expansion from 25 to 37, um, and yet they lost two flagship stores because they couldn't get it really renewed. That is a very, very big negative. Why do you think they can actually continue the store expansion? Because they might not even get it, you know, the least that's required, and the location could be terrible. Just to answer your first question on the uh, wet market share, so for NTUC FairPrice, it's not a publicly listed company, and wet markets, due to its fresh produced nature, there's not much publicly available data. However, just a general trend itself, wet markets have lost 13% over the two, in two years to modern retailers. And why we think Sengxiong is so well positioned to capture this market, it's because of its low price positioning. Firstly, their target segment is the lower to middle income group. And that is the segment that, produce, that purchases much more uh, fresh produce than the middle income and upper in income. And also, the, in the fresh produce segment, Sengxiong is the only one with large fish tanks available in its supermarkets itself, while the two, two other supermarkets have a much more limited fresh produce offering. Uh, just to give you a bit of local context, we went to a store in Welcome and we saw that uh, the, what they have offered is similar to what the NTUC Fair Price and Dairy Farm is offering, which is limited f fish tanks but more of fresh uh, date fish but fresh fish on ice. But for Sengxiong, they have the infrastructure ready and they are ready to carve out this niche in the fresh produce segment, which is why we believe that they are better positioned than the top two competitors to capture this market. Okay, um, to answer your question on store leases, we find that uh, the competitors would actually vie for the same store space that Sengxiong is going for. If we look at the store, so if you look at the store, space, the, the, the selection of store space. We find that Sengxiong aims for smaller uh, locations in the heartlands, which generate a revenue, uh, a cost per square meter of 350. However, the competitors go for store spaces in hubs, which cost $10, um, $10 per square foot per month onwards. So this is a significant cost advantage for Sengxiong. Yeah, I hear that um, I heard that um, you said this is a better time to buy no 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 other time is better than now um, I think the reason is uh, for the past two months the stock actually underperformed the Singapore stock uh, quite a bit and um, do you have any idea why it will be the case thank you for your question so the stock IPO in seven on 17 of August 2011 at 33 cents thereafter within a month it quickly ramped up to 50 cents but it has actually ranged between 40 cents to 50 cents in the last few months. Actually, the one reason why it could have put, uh, traded down is because of you know, people expecting uh, full year 11 numbers that came out last Friday to be very bad. And true enough, as a retail stock, you know, uh, Xingxiang after on Monday, the first trading day actually dropped 4% because headline news was net profit, Xingxiang's net profit fell 36%. But this was actually in line with our estimates. And I think what retail investors are missing here is that Xingxiang revenue is driven by store growth. In their full year 11 results, they have said that in the first quarter of 2012, they've already secured one new store lease, with three more expected to be concluded by the first half of 2012. If we were to include these four new stores in terms of square area, they account for 85% of our full year 2012 forecast. So I think um, that is one area where uh, retail investors are missing out on. 
but just on, on that matter, when um, the company first announced the results since their IPO, they were disappointing and apparently they didn't manage expectations very well, I think because of a couple of these stores that didn't open when they thought they would. Um, how concerned are you that ma management is not guiding investors correctly? Okay, thank you for your question. So I think management has guided. There's no new information in terms of the, the two stores, two flagship stores that were closed down. One was in November 2010, another in August 2011. These were information that were already available when they IPO'd. I think what happened is that market perception of, uh, market expectation of Sing Chong's full year numbers was actually much better than where they think, uh, where it actually came out. That's why it traded downwards. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Uh, Thank you. This may be a good success story and good stock to buy, but your presentation doesn't tell me anything about the liquidity of the stock, the free float. Would you tell something about that? Okay, uh, just to give you a perspective, the, the publicly available stock is only about 24% uh, of its total shares outstanding, while the three founders, the three brothers, are owning 76% of the entire share. And for the liquidity, it's about trading about five million Singapore dollars in daily. Do you have a sensitivity analysis as to um, you know out of that two eighty four percent um, leases to be renewed in two thousand thirteen, um, if um, half of the stores or twenty percent of stores were not renewed? What's the impact to the earnings? And given that they are not linked to any government body, it's uh, very likely they may not get the leases renewed. I just want to know what's the sensitivity. Thank you. Okay, for the sensitivity analysis, we looked at the most likely one that were close, which is the mid-sized store, which management management has expressed that they are they are cautious about that lease. That's the one that's at Super Bowl, and if that were to close, our share price would drop to fifty. Cents. Yeah, management won't tell you that they're going to have 10% or 20%, so it's just right. They'll just tell you the, the most conservative. Yes. I mean, so, if you so were to use um, your mind and look at locations and say which ones are likely and how so is yes. that be? So after that, we continue the analysis and forecast if two stores were to close. The share price would drop to $0.52 cents based on that analysis. Wait, wait, you said one store is $0.52, cents, right? One store is $0.55. Cents. Two sources, 52. Two so sources. every store that is not renewed is going to be three cents under, right? Yes. Oh, that will be dead. Sorry. <laughs> so when, when you say um, renew the new store, do you uh, have any assumption on the rental increase such that the margin actually decrease? Thank you for your question. So Sing Shiong actually does, in terms of rental, we have actually used it as a percentage of, um, uh, it's only 2% uh, as a percentage of sales, and as a percentage of administrative expense, it's uh, relatively stable in the last few years. Um, also, one reason why it was very difficult for, for the team to forecast the rental uh, expense is because sometimes they rent, sometimes they lease as a lump sum in the beginning. So the rental expense that we get in the income statement is actually not a true reflection of the rental expense. So what we have did is to maintain it as a percentage of our sales. What is the competitor response to Sheng Xiong's uh, plans to expand? Um, thank you for your question. Sheng Xiong's main competitors in Singapore are NTUC FairPrice and also Dairy Farm International Holdings, which runs Cold Storage and Shop and Safe. Now, Sheng Xiong's main plans to expand um, mostly is, is driven by a shift in its product mix which would help its which would help boost its margins. So it does a lot of direct sourcing in terms especially in terms of its fresh produce. So um NTC and and other uh, competitors such as Cold Storage do also recognize that this segment provides a higher margins um and adds to the net margins. But we believe that Shenzhen has a comparative advantage in this area because of its well established networks and um, good relationships with suppliers in this segment. So um, it has over 70 years of collective experience in this industry, and we believe that this would be able to provide Shenzhen with better contacts and be able to source directly with supplies and thus eliminate middleman costs. 
Um, just to give you a bit of local context, NTUC FairPrice, the market leader, is a company with a social uh, it's a social cooperative with a social responsibility goal. What they want to achieve is uh, good quality of life and low cost of living for Singaporeans. And 